Good day and welcome to the Fosterage Company Limited earnings call for the financial year ending December 31st, 2021, 2022. I am Renee McDonald, co-founder and COO of Learn Grow Invest Limited, and I will be your moderator for today's call. I invite you to place your questions in the comments throughout the duration of this call, as we will be facilitating a question and answer segment after the presentation. I will now hand over to Mr. Cecil Foster, CEO of Fosterage Company Limited, your chair for today. Okay, welcome. And thank you, Renee, for inviting me. I will now pray before I say anything else. For oh God and our Father, truly you are above all of us while you are still within us. We ask you now to come and to be with all of us who are participating in this event. May you bless our sittings. May you bless our, our thoughts and our ideas and what we share. May you continue to bless all of us as we thank you for what you have been doing and for what you will be doing in the future. So bless the investors, bless the company and every staff member and bless the partners and bless all of what we are um, we have laid out and we have achieved and what we will achieve. In your name we pray. Amen. So it's a pleasure to be a part of discussing with the wider public the outcome or the outturn of Fosterage Company Limited's financials for the year 2022. I can say that the year 2022 was one of the years that was most challenging. You know, the 2022, there was many things that seemed to be going in the wrong direction. And I think for what has happened to Fosterich over the period um, of 12 months, most redound to the real, real stick the vision and the focus of the, the Fast Rich team, and also the way God has led the team towards finding value for the people who are out there in need of our products. And so Fast Rich turned out to be, 2022 turned out to be a real, real profitable year for the company. I, I, I must bring this up general, generally. Uh, we, we looked at moving our revenues from $2.351 billion. And I think we ended up at $3.3991 billion. What that says is that we have grown by over a billion dollars in revenue for a calendar year for the first time we did a um, billion and $22 million in that, um, that period. And there are reasons why we did that. We focused strongly on finding where the sweet value spots are for the customers. We decided years ago that after reading the market and playing in the market for a while, we recognized that the market um, needed certain products and they needed certain products at certain time and they needed certain products at certain price and quality and they needed relationship. And so we have come up with this proverbial table. We said at Fosterage that we are building a table with four strong legs. We wanted to build it on the electrical distribution we wanted to build it on lighting and LED. Those are lighting products. We wanted to bring, build the other leg on the energy. And we wanted to build the fourth leg on the manufacturing, on the industrial offerings that we make to the Jamaican market. So what we have done throughout 2023 was to focus on those, 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 um, I mean, systems of providing value to the customer. And we were ready for 2022 with inventory in place and with the team of people that we wanted to bring the value to the customers. And then we interacted with 
people out there and we found what their needs were and we were able to satisfy those needs. And so when you look through the revenue that we generated in 2022, all we have some lines, they are breakout from those four legs that we spoke about earlier on, four proverbial legs of the table. And they make up approximately 11 different business lines talking about LEDs, talking about the solar part of the business, you're talking about the um, wiring devices, you're talking about um, PVC and so on. And we, all the lines did tremendously well last year. We didn't only do well because we, we, we grow in, in numbers. We did well in those lines because we also grew in volume because what we have been doing is tracking the changes in volume that we are um, offering each year or selling each year. And so we are thanking God for having done such wonderful thing for us. In that same year, 2022, that's last year, which we just posted, the first time also we did a net profit of, of over a billion dollars. I think it was one, sorry, I know it was one billion three hundred and ninety-one million dollars that um, not net profit, gross profit was in in that um, this last year. And again, that was pretty good. We also did um, we also did a, a 43 percent increase in in the bottom line in, in revenues and we did a 126% in the bottom line, that's a profit compared to the year before. We did $325 million in 2022 as, as net profit, and we did, we did 199 in the year 2021. If you should add the dividend that we paid out in the year, which was approximately $60 million, we came out really strong in 2022. So that is something that we are looking forward to continuing in the years to come. It is also to be noted that we, December 19, last year, 2022, we ended our first year on first five years on the Jamaica um, Juna market. And you know, the Juna market has given us a hundred percent tax I mean, free on um, the activities for the first five years. And the next five years, the view of Fosters will have 50% um, of the taxes that is due to be paid to the um, relevant authorities. And so we use the time, the five year span, we use that five year span to really set those four um, legs of the proverbial table that I spoke about earlier, the industrial and man manufacturing, the energy, including solar, the lighting, including the LEDs and the electrical distribution. And so we use those, um, we use the opportunity to, to build those, those um, revenue systems and uh, we've always said that every single day we get up at Fosswich, we look towards making those four legs stronger and stronger and stronger. And nothing is going to change on that. Whatever is before us is going to be something that we, we, we take seriously, but we are going to be looking towards building and strengthening these four legs that we have. Uh, as, as the proverbial table. Uh, in the year 2022, as last year, you would have been aware that we've um, discontinued the, in our Blue Emerald factory in Clarendon, we discontinued um, being under the regime of the SEZ. Now you might ask why we, we discontinued it. We went through a process of of, of, of dealing with the authorities 
and uh, we got all the indications through documentations and so on that they, they, the operations in the zone would be um, duty free and therefore we would be able to export export from that location and also we'll be able to operate at least at the same at the same um, rate of duties or, or, or benefits sorry that we were deriving from our first factory which is in Kingston when we started in that space we recognized within the next within the first couple of months that it was not so I think what happened the the two entities, the SEZ authority um, and the customs had, had um, a little bit of differences that they had to work out because the treaty or the revised treaty of Chagaramos prevented the customs from treating goods coming out of the zone, which the Blue Emerald um, company was set up to, I mean, to benefit from. The goods coming out of the zone would not be free of duty. And so I've always been saying, I've been saying recently, I'm very proud of my managers to, to let us move quickly and we move quickly to discontinue being a part of the um, special economic zone. Now, how does that affect us? It does not affect us what the reason for going in there was because we wanted to benefit more from um, the incentives that we we were were offered. Um, what have what has happened or experience in the factory that we now have in Kingston, which was our first factory, showed us that we we have been getting a lot of incentives already, and it is workable and working so we have moved from the sez in the blue emerald um, space back to the same status that we have under the um, tax act in in this factory in kingston to be in the same factory in clarendon and so we are not losing anything we are able to export from the location because the location is treated as a, a jurisdiction um, that, that is Jamaica instead of a foreign jurisdiction which would prevent us from getting what you call it a um, certificate of origin when you are exporting so that said we did it and we are fine because we are making a lot of pipes in the Blue Emerald location in Clarendon and so those were some of the strong high points or the strong points of 2022 that um, came to light in the financials that we have put out there. Corporate social responsibility. I think we, we are very keen in helping the, the corporate world and the less fortune, fortunate persons in, in the society. And so we have involved in like the pink run. We have involved in, we were in also involved in the Sigma run or team members, um, maybe a number of them, maybe 30, 40 or, or so of them, of us were involved in those runs. And uh, we are happy to know that, that they are so inclined. The Good Samaritan Inn is something that we really feel strongly about. This Good Samaritan Inn was conceptualized by us in 2017. We started it, and I remember the date. It was the 7th, 2017, and uh, we started by feeding just about 12 or 15 people at the location that is at Jefford Place in Crossroads, that is the old standing motor building. And I must say, it has been now 15 years that we have been working in that space. And uh, so far, we have been feeding on a weekly basis over 1,500 people. 
and they come in and they get, because we have facility for them to um, bathe and wash themselves and they get a little message of hope and they get um, something to eat. And we also built with the help of some other entities like the Adventist Church in East Conference built a 30 bed um, trauma overnight center. And we went from there to build a, a clinic. And that clinic is serving a lot of Jamaicans. If you were, if you are able to think back when the prime minister and the um, former prime ministers were to take their, um, their vaccine, their COVID vaccine, that was the center that they used in Crossroads. And so we were very pleased that we could work with the Ministry of Health to make that location um, available to them for free for close to two years. And so those are some of the things that we are involved in there. Team building, team building. Um, we have a great um, set of persons who are part of our team. They are some of who I call the very best. In fact, they're not only just team members, they are family. And they're not just family, they are close families. Some of them are with, uh, with us for the last 15, 18 years. And so we regard them I mean, super well. We, we, we think that going forward, that training and developing the um, talents that we have at Fosterage is very, very important. So we are in the process of training every member of staff. In fact, we started two years ago what we call the Fosterage Corporate University. Under that regime, our training um, institution, we, we have lecturers from the highest um, tertiary levels in the country to play a role in, in, in training our people. And plus we have um, persons who are able to, Jamaicans, but maybe train and develop talents in the Caribbean working with us. So last year, we, we had about 65% of our staff being trained on various aspects of, of developing themselves and taking care of them, their environment uh, and, and growing their, their um, expertise. And also we train the, the team on the actual specifics that we want to achieve in the company. And so we are very keen on that. And one of the other big ones that we did last year was to train our top managers. Leadership training took place between May and November. And uh, we, see where we are benefiting greatly from that. We see going forward, if we do not spend the time to develop, train and focus the staff that we have on, 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 on our team, we might not um, have the talent pool that we want to, to get to where we want to go. And so while we ask people to work hard and focus on their goals and their targets and we train them and so on. We also have what we call a million dollar sales award gala. And the good thing is it is gonna be this weekend um, at the Pegasus. We have been awarding our sales team and support team members, including persons who might not have anything to do with direct sales like accounts and um, even the ancillary workers. So last year, I think we, we developed, we, we had uh, about 26 of the people of our team in a most um, wonderful environment and we award and, and recognize them for their services. Strat strategic initiative. Um, we, where we are here at, at at uh, Fast Rich and the kind of business that we do, it requires um, us to be strong in able to source funding. And so we have been given the go ahead to, to engage in a rights issue by our shareholders. I, I 
and it is taking a, a little bit too long. We have gone through the process, and I don't know what has been the snag by the authorities until the last week, um, um, a week or two ago. Everything now is in place. No, I, I'm going to be open to you. That might be something that we have to really look on because we weren't going to the market for a lot of a lot of funds. We were going to the market just to max out the share capital that we have um, as a junior market company. And that was just about to raise $139 million. Uh, what we have seen is that the market is soft now. And so we might want to look at that and put it back to the shareholders if this is something that we really need to go go with at this present time. So I just want to say that. Um, we want to continue to grow the PVC business. It's a huge business. Uh, the PVC in Jamaica, we have valued it to be about $20 billion a year. We are presently just about hitting, I mean, 10% of the market. Our aim is to go for um, five, I mean, 15 to 30% within the next two years. And we have the capacity to, to do it. Um, we've expanded the factory in Clarendon. And when we added the capacity in Clarendon with the capacity in Kingston, we have moved from about 3 million kilograms of raw material that we can process per year to we are about 15 million kilograms. What we have done here, we have strengthened that side of our business to take the Jamaican market um, by the scrap of the neck. We really want to go and, um, and take on this market, which we are doing as we speak. And one of the other joys is to see engineers and chemical engineers and just technical people in their location being able to get up and come to work and feed their families instead of having to go to external co um, countries to find good employment. And so that is something that we are very proud about and we are seriously going to go in that direction as we are expanding, as we have done the expansion. And so we have also gone into the industrial pipes where all these sewer pipes that are imported into the country, they don't have to be anymore because we are making up to the 12 inches um, um, in our factory in Clarendon. If I want to say what, what's the strategic look for our location in Kingston and so on, we are now in the, in the um, construction phase of what you call a superstore. It's a 143,000 square feet of um, superstore commercial space for, um, for um, for professionals and also a uh, six to 800 seat BPO space. And we are gonna be having environment where you can come in and, and lounge and have, and have your dinner or have lunch or have just to get a bite and run. As you know, Mullines Road needs something like that. And I think we are very much looking towards this, this superstore being finished. And uh, we are looking for the middle of the year 2024 for it to finish. And we will have uh, a totally different change in our environment or in our offering times. We see where it makes no sense. You know, I, I have friends and even last week, Put it this way, even our workers, one, one of our workers left work and rushed to a place to try and get um, something. And then she called me the following morning, that's Friday morning, to say, listen, listen, she has to go back to the place because when she got there, it was closed. I think if Jamaica is going to move forward, we cannot have, have productive time being used to have your best assets going to get uh, goods or services because stores are open or business other business places are open at 
eight o'clock or nine o'clock, and then you close at four or five o'clock. And so we're gonna have some extending hours like from seven o'clock to 10 o'clock on most evenings. And even on the weekends, like on Sunday, you're gonna have opening hours up until say six in the evening from, from seven in the morning. And so we are looking forward to that space um, that we are coming up with in the super center at 76 Molais Road. Presentation of the financials. Um, I, I did a little bit of elaboration on this earlier on. We, we were up turnover compared to 2021. 20, we were up 43%. The growth in profit, um, which is gross profit, was up by 33%. Um, operating profit was up by 31%. And profit before taxation was up by 63%. And so 63% um, growth in net profit for a year that was a, a very tough year, I think is something that the shareholders and well, ourselves and the shareholders uh, are very happy about. Earnings per share was up by 50% um, over the year uh, 2021. And that is something that we're happy for. Um, as you can see here, where cash in cash and um, cash equivalent was up by 44% and uh, property plant and equipment up by 100 and I think 47%. Here's where you know um, this, 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 which you have, you know, current portion of long term loan, it is, it is something that is going to work itself out. What happened here, we have we had a bond of about, um, I think is $860 million that was due to be rolled in February um, last month. And this is what it shows up there. We, 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 we did roll it. Um, and so you will see that the lag time will make the number um, come out of the red. I mean, uh, in a little while. And so that is something that we are, we are happy that we could have rolled the bond at a very good rate. And so we have you now in place, what you call it a 10 year bond instead of um, share capital, as you can see is up by about 2%. And then um, retain earnings was up by 45% from $588 million to 852 million dollars in 2022. And you can see it's the cash, the cash position um, move from a negative 68 million to 92 and you have cash flow from investment. There was a negative 53 and then you have cash flow from um, financing and then you have cash flow from um, Cash and cash equivalent was about a hundred and three thousand dollars or a million dollars. Yes. And so, when you compare um, the gross um, profit percentage was forty one percent compared to twenty twenty one when it was forty two percent. And as of course, the, the inventory turnover is 0.98. Um, reason for that is because we are, we are, we, we, the, the supply chain concern that the world has been grappling with right this minute, we made sure that we secured ourselves and secured some inventory in order for us to be ahead of the game. And um, also receivable turnover, it's, it's, it's not as bad. We, we made agreement with, with some of our major um, customers that we would give them a, a couple of days over and so on. 
and um, as you can see the ratios and um, I, I would say no more you can see bad debt and so on not in a bad place yes company outlook I think from where we sit we 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 expect things to be a little bit on the tough side so for 2023 we have dubbed it the, the the word that we are using is defiant we have decided that we are going to defy the high interest rates we're going to defy the talk of recession we're going to defy the challenges in supply chain and we are going to defy those things and, and, and move forward towards the goals that we have set for ourselves. So I see 2023 as a year where, one, we're going to be making what I would call transformer coils in Jamaica for the first time. As we speak, the machine is arriving in the country and we will be, we will be um, installing the machine within two weeks of, of, of getting it in the warehouse and then we start to make calls. What does that say? We, we have a contract with JPS to do at least 1,400 of those pole mount transformers that you see on the light poles. They have over 60,000 of them in circulation. Those are very, very important for the um, distribution or the transmission of of power across the country. And so every year through the burst up or lightning strike or something, they have, uh, I mean, thousands of them to be repaired. And so we have um, that contract in Jamaica to repair them. Formerly, they used to repair them abroad. They used to ship them abroad and ship them back because it cost them, cost them hundreds of thousands of US dollars. Now, this deal that we have with them in a three to four year period is going to save them close to a billion Jamaican dollars because we are able to manufacture these, um, these um, or refurbish these um, transformers and make them new again. And so we give them a 10 year warranty at the end. And what we have found also is that we have, we have a partner in Canada who we are one of the largest transfer manufacturing partners in the in the in North America and they are working with us and we have sent our team members up there for training and to develop themselves and they are able to make coils in in that country and so they have come back and they have come back with machines and we are now going to be making coils in Jamaica for I think it has never been done before but we are looking forward to making a um, lot of these calls in Jamaica in the next couple of weeks. Um, I mentioned earlier on about the fact that we are, we have gone, we have expanded the, 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 the capacity of the PVC factory because we want the Jamaican market. I'm not even focusing, I'm not even saying that right now about the um, Caribbean market, even though we are we are taking our place in that market, but we want to really dominate the, um, the Jamaican market a little bit more. We want to, I mean, ask people to stop importing and and get these products here in Jamaica. Um, and so that's what we are focusing on. And the sewer pipes makes it a lot easier for us to have a full range of electrical, of plumbing and drain, and then also of sewer. So that offering is a super offering that I think we'll make in the next couple of um, weeks and so on. Great numbers coming to our, I mean, our shores. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing there. So, and what we have done also, the sweet spot um, in the globe right now, uh, one sweet spots is what I regard as energy, it spots. It is amazing opportunity to know that we have we're partnered with 
global company like Huawei to deliver solar inverters and, and Jinko, the number one solar panel manufacturer in the world to bring solar solutions to the market in Jamaica. Last year, the solar business grew by 96%. And um, I can, I, I, this year, we are gonna be growing, at what I would say, more than 100%. So we are looking forward to having that kind of a um, drive out there in 2023 to get people solarized as much as possible. And so we have partnered with a few institutions. And as you know, you have different tiers of, 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 of rates coming from different institutions. Like you have the, the, I mean, the microfinance companies, and then you have the government quasi uh, entity like DBJ. DBJ is at 8.75%. And we have been inundated by customers who want to be financed through using DBJ or, or so on. And so we are working with a lot of customers to get their uh, so get panels and inverters in their space. And so one, we are definitely working on doubling or tripling up our offering for the solar business and the PVC business, we have expanded it and we're going even further. And also the transformer business, these are, things that will bring us great numbers in the back end of this year into next year. And we are hoping that um, it can bring great results to our shareholders. Thank you so much for, for such a comprehensive review, Mr. Foster. I believe you had a video that you wanted to share um, regarding regarding the expansion or the building okay. of the superstore. Okay, yes. So it'll allow you to do that as well. Okay. So this is what's gonna happen over 76. What is being built now over 76, as you can see the blue, blue building is being built. The one to the back, which you will see in a short while, was built, that was phase one. Um, so this is phase two that you see here being built and should be ready for the middle of next year. And the one in red, the warehouse, that is now being used, it's occupied, it's at 30,000 um, square feet, and we call it the super center, I mean, sorry, the FFC fulfillment center. And we are looking forward to serving a lot of people at that location as we move on. So this is what the store is gonna be, look like and offer. We're gonna have the partners being substantially placed in their life the Huawei, the Jinko, and all of these people. Then we are going to be having food on the mezzanine, whether it be, you know the names and so on, we're going to be having there. And then on top, um, that's the other floor, what's the third floor, this is going to have a BPO in that space up there. And then it's about 600 or so um, spaces for BPO. And, and above there now, we're gonna have the Fosrich corporate suite or head office where we will host all of our staff. It is gonna be real um, solarized because it's gonna be energy efficient. Here's where you can come and pick up your, you can come and dine and have evening activities uh, at the location. And um, even for the staff to have fun at lunchtime enjoy themselves because we are big on work life balance here at Fosrich and therefore we want our staff to have some of the best environment because we are holding them to um, great uh, performance and results and therefore we want them to have some of the best environments environment that they could they could have to operate in and so uh, that location will be ready as I said in the next next year, mid-year next year. And that is very exciting, very exciting to see. So congratulations on the progress so far with that. And thank you for sharing it with your our audience and yours here today.
So we're, we're going to jump into the questions and answers. We have a few questions from our community that was that, that were sent in prior to this call, and we have a few that would have come in during the call. So we will start with this question from Robert Williams. Has there been significant take up regarding the recent partnership with Access and Dollar? Okay. Um, as I was trying to say, they're, they're what you call it, there are different rates of risk and, and rates carry different um, risk. And so some of the financial institutions are a little bit higher than others. And so some people are not moving as fast to them. So that might, dollar might fall in that category and access, but for the DBJ, that is um, a little bit low, lower than them by I wouldn't say a little bit lower than that, very much lower than them. You find that we have processing taking place now through the AFIs of, of a number of persons who are interested in financing their solar system. So I know the institutions like Access and Dollar, they are working with DBJ to make funds available to them, through them, so they can get um, better rates to the customers, so they can be more active in the in the space of financing their request you know and it is to be noted that we can get to you can get to um go to your credit union you can go to any bank and ask them for the dbj loan because the dbj loan if that suits you better with a better interest rate you can get a lot of um, results from that thank you for that O'Neill is asking, is, is there any news on the LED light bulbs as per the new policies by the Jamaican government? Okay, great. Um, the LED light bulbs, as you know, they are the world world's best energy saving uh, <clears throat> lighting product by far. One to one, they are 80%. And so 80% better in saving your energy. So what the government has done last week was to say they are no stopping the importation of incandescent light bulb. It is always something that should have happened and should have happened a long time ago. And it is happening now. And I think that that our plan this year was almost like we knew what was happening. We have a team that is dedicated now in only selling light bulbs. And um, what we have done, we have looked at the number of light bulbs in the country and we have seen, I can't tell you the numbers, it has, huge is not 10 or 20 or 30 uh, um, million light bulbs a lot of light bulbs are there in the country and we figure we are we are on a, a pathway right now with our team that is going to be selling maybe close to a, a million just for this year uh, alone of light bulbs to the market in order to help us to consume a little less energy so great news indeed indeed i think we're all happy to hear to hear that. O'Neill again is asking, is there, to your knowledge, any other local or regional player in the supply, manufacturing, or repair of G JPS gold transformers in anyone no, else's campuses? No, O'Neill. Um, we have been combing this, we have been combing the, the in, um, environment, and we have not seen that at this time. Um, it is something that is very capital intensive and also um it's as i want to say totally specialist area but you have to have good good um support system at least to start off this thing and if we are doing our numbers with jps and we are looking at manufacturing the coils in jamaica then you know that we are going to be way ahead of any other person who would want to come into the space so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to do Get, in, get stronger and stronger every day at providing the offering that we are we are doing. Okay, happy to hear that. Tryan is asking, what did you mean when you, by soft, when you were referring to the rights issue? I believe you had mentioned that the market was soft and so it was not, it was not an ideal environment for the rights issue. So um, I'd ask you to just reiterate and clarify the term soft. For our audience. Okay, I was I was referring to the fact that um, the 
share price is a pretty low, is a, a little bit low, low now. That's what I was, I, I was mentioning. Not that it is, it, I see energy, I see, a, we feel a lot of energy towards taking up this thing. Because remember, you know, uh, most of this is gonna, we are participating in this rights issue. So going to the market with just 29 or $30 million is really, is really a no brainer. But I, I would say in the market was soft because the, the price was a little bit low at this time. As you know, you know, you know, markets go up and down and so on. So that's the reason for me saying that, um, you know, um, Tyron. So a, a few persons in the audience have asked about the rights issue, about when the circular will come out. You would have mentioned it earlier in our discussion, but we have some some persons who are just joining. So I'd ask you to again share what is the status of the rights issue? Overall, the rights issue, um, it's the, the, the authorities took a pretty long time to come to me. Um, but I said, I mean, they, it was, it went through a number of hands and therefore it took a long time, longer than we expected. I wanted to close this thing from last year and now it is ready. They are ready to go. We are thinking that the, 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 um, the price of the, that's why I'm saying soft, the price of the shares might be not in a place that we really want to want to do that right this minute. That might not be the best news for those who are listening. That's why the questions are coming. <laughs> but yes, the, there's much interest. Yes, yes. And we appreciate the interest that you you have shared. I mean, you have. But um, we are going to be meeting this week again to see if we need to move with it or, or delay a little bit longer. Well, the delay before was not our doing, OK? <laughs> 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 okay, thank you for that clarification. And I hope, I hope that that eases the minds of our audience a bit and that they will therefore look out for communication from Fosterage further on the rights issue matter. Perfect. Perfect. So Moncherie says, congratulations on your successes. Congratulations on the training of your management team. But she's curious about the training of your floor staff. Okay, yes. You know, um, management can always stay in their little cocoon and they say that things are going well. If you do not have the alignment of the staff who are interfacing with the customers every day, they're the ones who are making, um, carrying out the, the working, the everyday policies, and they're the ones who are talking to them on the phone. They are the salespeople who are out there in the different um, hardwares and electrical places and so on. We want them to be not only on the cutting edge, but we want them to be cutting the edge. And no training that we can do to ourselves is enough. So it is significant in our, in our minds that we keep training these um, staff who are on the floor, who we regard so much, and that they, when they, they can deliver the quality service that you who would come in and do business with us or call in us or, or send messages to us that you would want for yourself. And so that's a part of the customer service a package that we do. We train them how to be um, the best person that they can be and how they can deliver the best value each day to the persons who they interact with. And we also train them in specific products that would require us offering um, technical support to the customers. And so those are some of the things that we train the floor staff in. So thank you. Um, and Monshari had a, had a follow up where, where she's indicating that, um, you know, you lost a customer who was determined to buy a hybrid solar system last November because there was no attention from the floor staff during her first hour in the store and so i think she's bringing that to your attention um for for some action and i think it's also a good opportunity to share with the audience how best to communicate with management when there is such an issue experienced in the absolutely 
and I must stop right here to apologize, Monchery. I'm so sorry that you would have uh, felt um, disconnected from the service that was not offered or was offered that you had to go somewhere else. I like you to take my number and I like you to you, on my email and just email me and I will do my best to make it up to you. Not that I can service recovery by making you buy a solar system again, but I want to share with you some more details of the things that we are doing and ask you how we could get better by by by, by listening to some of the things that you experience in our store. I'm really sorry about that. Um, as you know, I mean, service is something that it's one of the most difficult things because today somebody feels good and then they give you good service. Tomorrow they're not feeling so good and they don't give you good service. Sometimes some demands pull people away from the floor you and you can't, you can't really have the floor stuck with a thousand people all the time serving, a, I mean, a few customers. And sometimes that is not managed properly or persons, whatever it is, there's no excuses. I am saying that it shouldn't happen. And we are sorry about that. And we just like to um, have a conversation with you on this matter and um, see how you can help us to, to get better at that. Thank you for that. And I'll just add, Monchery, um, please feel free to reach out to us and we will, we will make that connection for you with Mr. Foster. Perfect. And she says you're forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> She's on her way. She's on her way to heaven. <laughs> Wonderful. So we have another question from our community and it says, is there any update on your plans to expand to Guyana? Ah, I don't know if I should, who, who I should say it. But, um, well, it is out in the media that we, we were in Guyana um, in, in January with a team. And um, since then we have been working with, we have been working with some, <laughs> some uh, of the institutions in Guyana, especially the light and power, you know, they have about seven um, power companies in, in Guyana. And I think there are some wonderful opportunities there for us to, um, either export from here coils that are made in Jamaica or go and make these coils in in, um, in Guyana. There are some opportunities and, I, and I'm smiling because I'm trying to be very careful not to uh, say things that I will get into trouble for by not informing the stock exchange first. But we're not at the point of signing anything right this minute, but we are definitely um, strong in in our intentions to bring something could be could be this year um i don't know let's see <laughs> okay thank you for that we do understand that there there are some things that you cannot say until you have informed the yes. necessary bodies so it is okay Yes, Our next yes. question is, what is the full scope of the arrangement with GK Pension Fund for the building of the new superstore? I tell you, my people are the best. I just love my Jamaicans. They are absolutely <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Why do Jamaicans go elsewhere in the world? We should all stay here and build Jamaica. I tell, I tell you, um, what happened? We presently, that space, that four-acre property over there, we lease it from Grace Kennedy. And so we put to them um, years ago that we are looking to develop it if they would be interested in developing it. In fact, they said that they had a lot of pension fund that was now looking for uh, construction space. And so we, we went ahead and made an agreement with them that we would design and um, conceptualize and design what we would want um, at the location and they would fund it if we do so and they said yes and so we have conceptualized it we have designed it and they have come to the table and they are building it when they are through building it next year and we take it over that will be our space for the next 25 years um, and then what we will do is we will have tenants we will sublet various parts as i was mentioning food and bpo and so on we're not interested in doing 
food business, nor the BPO sp space. We're not into that. So we have persons or companies that we are um, talking with already who will be occupying the space. So all that will happen is that we will we will have the space for at least 25 years and we will be um, paying the responsible for the monthly mortgage and the tenants who will come and, and, and share the space with us. Understood. Yes. Thank you for that. What was your understanding of the cost or benefits of operating in the SEZ? And what is different now that caused you caused you to abandon the plan, which I think you, you would have spoken on earlier. Yeah. And I think the, the other part of the question is, did that sunk cost contribute to the fourth quarter loss last year? No, no, I think, I think, no, we, we, to go into thing there, into um, the space, we understood fully well from all discussions and documentation that we would have been given a little bit more um, incentive compared to what we have here in our other factory. And when we recognized that it wasn't going to be so, because now we were required to pay 20% duty with the goods coming out of the space, we didn't fuss about it. We just decided that we just go back to the regime that we have here in Kingston and operate under that regime, which does not require us to pay any duty and um, does not. Um, and there are some other um, incentives that we get for manufacturing the goods here. Uh, what we, we were looking to benefit from, we were looking to benefit from um, an, an, an export because we wanted to get a little bit cheaper prices so we can really push into the Caribbean market. This that we are doing now still affords us to, but everything, another two or three of, or 5% would make it even a little sweeter and so on. We didn't spend a lot of money for this space in Clarendon, we and we did not we did not spend a lot of money for the space in Clarendon at all. We had a very good relationship with the owner that, that is Factories Corporation, and they and they worked out with us um, a pretty good rate for us to be in that space. And we are still in that space, and we are not intent on moving in that space because we do have a 25 year lease, and uh, we can move that up to 50 years if we if we so within first uh, 10 years we can stretch it to 50 years after that so that's what I would say I know so I, I think just to follow up on that um, there there is a, a, a question about the fourth quarter loss would you be able to say what would have what would have contributed to that I think I think I think um, we we are not seeing it the way the community is seeing it and so um it might not have been a, a great quarter but it's not something that we are seeing the same way um maybe i'm missing something but i'll go look again and look again and look again right i'm All not right. interested in anybody because i know you guys are smart out there yes <laughs> yes we have very educated investors here and and that community that community is growing so we are Absolutely. thankful for that yes. yes and the other part of the question is can you achieve your expected level of profitability without the sec partnership and do you have a contingency in place oh wait it didn't hurt us it just it was going to put more in our in our pocket so i would say that kind of a way it didn't hurt us because the good thing is that we have a factory already in kingston and this is not hurting us it's just that we wanted a little bit more you know you know where we wanted a little bit more and it is not gonna hurt us because we are operating here and we are exporting from here and we are doing pretty well very well with this market um, that we are challenging with the manufacturing under this regime here now so that's what it is really okay thank you how exactly do you plan to grow or to continue growing for 2023 and have we seen the best of fosterage in the 2022 financial year <laughs> i tell you the kind of energy that i see in the solar and the energy division 
right now. And um, I tell you, the kind of we we we, we made an announcement in uh, in January, and before you know it, we have over almost three hundred million dollars worth of requests since then for solar system, which we are working with the teams, uh, the financial the financial teams to finance as as much as possible of that. Um, we we have a, a huge growth in line for the PVC business. And we have also, because remember, we have just now started. Last year, there was no sewer pipe, no, no large pipe that entered the financials or the numbers for last year. They are coming in this year. So we are looking forward to a huge growth in there. Um, and then the other thing is we are looking forward to growing the, we talk about the solar, we talk about the PVC, and we are also um, looking forward to growing the, making the coils in Jamaica and do a lot of um, transformers as we speak from the second quarter onward. All right, thank you for that. That's a lot of growth to be expected. And I'm sure that the community members and your investors will be watching the financials, the quarterly reports to see exactly that. I need some help. Yes, Anil, I need some help. Yes, I need. Can you distribute light bulbs? I mean, seriously, it is called the Jamaican light bulb, not the other light bulb, okay? <laughs> yes, so um, that is O'Neill offering his help. So again, O'Neill, if you need to contact, if you need to contact Mr. Foster, um, just send us a message and we'll send you his email address so you can get in touch. And I believe this may be our last question for you, Mr. Foster. And this is from Roland Campbell. He says he knows that the company's plan is to take over the Jamaican market. Is there any future plan to take over other countries' markets? <laughs> only if, only if um, <laughs> Roland join me, then I will be able to take over other countries' market. Um, to be frank, we are in communication with some um, of the Caribbean markets, and we are, and we are seeing great openings, great possibilities. I don't know if we can take them over, but I think we want some revenue numbers to come in this year from um, those countries. And so I will say that. Okay, and Roland is asking, is adding, would the company have a team to carry out maintenance on sewage pipes, et cetera? If yes, he thinks that would be another way of generating capital for the company. I am not aware of that business and that business, maybe you can talk to us, that business being being something that will uh, will make um, financial, I mean, numbers for us. Um, I know the business of, sir, I mean, doing St. Catherine and, and the roads and so on with these pipes uh, is a great possibility, a huge um, number possibility, but I'm not too sure about the the, the servicing or so of maintenance yet of the sewer pipes. Okay. So thank you so much for, for those questions um, from the audience. And thank you so much for your responses, Mr. Foster. I am sure that it has been beneficial for everyone here, including myself. I want to close with, with one question um, and that is not in the chat, but I'd like to close by asking about the Good Samaritan Inn. You would have mentioned it earlier as a part of your corporate social responsibility. And I I wanted to, to get a little bit more about how it works. Is, is it an opportunity for, for persons to volunteer their services and to give back through the Good Samaritan Inn? Absolutely, absolutely. Very good question. The, because these people who come there are street people. You should see them in the days. They, they just push their handcart and just carry their their life life goods on their back, and they come and they <clears throat> get a ticket or they register and they get food and they can use the, I mean the uh, the amenities to wash or to or to groom themselves and so on. And then when the dental thing is open, they are able to do that. That is something that I think um, and persons can volunteer. Um, some university kids do volunteer, volunteer there in order to get um, their community service aspect of their work, the courses um, done. Yes, 
Um, every Wednesday is a fast switch day for the last 15 years. And um, we are so happy. I would be happy if you have volunteers, additional volunteers. We have a manager for it. We have we have a team of people who who are there every day to make sure that things run. And so, yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. I will now hand over to you to present your closing remarks. And again, I say thank you to the audience for, for tuning in and for being a part of this call. Over to you, Mr. Foster. Thank you so much, Renee. I think for those who are on call and those who will listen later on, I want to say thank you very much for giving Fosterich and ourselves the joy of working with you. Um, finding solutions for you over the years. And in 2022, uh, we are promising you that our commitment is to get better and better each day through the developing of, the developing of our people and, and, and developing our skills <clears throat> and the understanding of the market and the value systems that you have out there and what you, you would want to make sure that you are, are benefiting from. We want to know all of that and we thank you for giving us the opportunity and we look forward to 2023. We are eager, we are eager to win and we are taking ownership and we are teaming up to excel. And I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Ooh la la, I see what I want at the Fosterich Super Sale, March 21 to 31, Kingston, Maneville, and Montego Bay. Come get your wires, breakers, chandeliers, wall lamps, LED bulbs, and so much more. Shop in Kingston, Maneville, and Montego Bay. You can't afford to miss it. Come shop, come save at Fosterich Super Sale, March 21 to 31. See you there at Fosterich.